Hey everybody, welcome back to D&G Ministry. So I'm here with Gabby. In today's video, we wanted to review The Chosen, season three, episode one and two. There was a scene, and I just encourage you guys to watch it yourself so you have more of like the idea and perception so you're not just taking our words for it. Little James, they call him, went up to Jesus in the show and he was basically saying, Jesus, is it your will to heal me? Because this was when there, Jesus was sending them out. So before he was going to go out, you know, to pray for healing, he wanted to be healed himself. So he's like, Jesus, is it your will to heal me? And Jesus goes, it is the Father's will. But, and then that's like immediately as soon as he said that, that makes no sense. Because Jesus says in the word that his will is to do the Father's will. And we see that in the Father's yeah. will, it is to always heal people. We don't see every single person on earth be healed, but we cannot play God and assume why. We just need to know that we're called to cast out demons, we're called to pray for the sick, and they shall recover. That's what the <clears throat> scripture says. And for us believers, we can drink any deadly poison and we shall not be sick. It shall not harm us. And so, anyways, the scene continues and Jesus is basically telling him, he's like, yeah, I could heal you right now, but it'd be a better story basically if I don't heal you because of the testimony. I kind of see the emotional perspective of it, but I don't see the biblical perspective of it. And I don't think we should be adding anything to the Bible because it just can really quench someone's faith for healing and they're going to be asking, well, is it God's will to heal me? You know, maybe they saw someone else healed, but they're like, well, it was God's will to heal this person, but not me. And then it just brings a lot of confusion because then it's like, oh, God only heals certain people, which... God doesn't say in his word. And so that scene was definitely something that was grieving in my spirit and I heavily just felt sick when I was watching the scene. A lot of people that watch this video, you can disagree and that's fine, but I think it's very important that we don't base our belief on experience because there's a lot of experiences out there, but we're called to base it on the only truth that we have, which is the word of the Bible. If we continue to stand firm in what God's word says, it doesn't matter what we see. We walk by faith and not by sight. And so that's kind of my take on that scene. So I just want to share my side from this. Yes, I believe that this was intentionally for the storyline. I see what they were doing because a lot of times in real life, people have that same question. People ask themselves, God, you heal all these other people, but I'm still not healed. So like, why won't you heal me? And that was pretty much what this little James was saying. You're telling us to go heal the sick, but I'm not healed yet. Can you heal me? And then that's where Jesus was just going into, you know, you're gonna have a better story because you're still going out being obedient praying for the sick, yet you're sick. So I, I seen how that was for the storyline. I do believe it's God's will to heal people. And I believe when Jesus was walking the earth, he obviously, it says in his word that he healed the sick. Did he go up to every single person and healed them? No, because he was just one man. He was, he was still a fleshly body like us. I'm not going to be able to go heal every single person. That's why many disciples are needed. I just can't imagine, you know, say, say that specific part happens. Say one of Jesus' disciples said, hey, can you heal me, Jesus? I don't understand how Jesus could turn somebody down. That's just something we'll never really be able to answer because again, why, like we need to simply just go to God's word. When people watch a scene, especially if they're not truly born again and read the word, then they're gonna, they could easily take that the wrong way. And so I guess the last thing that I want to say is God can use bad things for good. The enemy could also use things that look good for bad. And I believe that's the chosen. The chosen looks innocent. I could totally see how the enemy could use this to deceive people. The enemy makes the path to hell beautiful. You could so easily be deceived and it could easily be something that is corrupted. It's God's will to heal people. I do see that there's people out there who truly seek the Lord with all their heart. God, heal me, heal me, heal me, heal me. But they don't experience it. And I can't question God because I, I don't know why. I would encourage you to never stop asking for that healing, to never stop seeking it. Because I, like she was saying, that's what the scene can do to people. It can make people think, oh, okay, so God's not gonna heal me, but I still, I still matter. And I think that's what their intention was with that scene. You'll just have to see it for yourself. Yeah. I would say episode two, was more controversial than the first one we watched in the theater. Yeah, I even want to say too, like I personally don't want to be overly critical, but people trying to imitate Christ in movies, I've never been able to connect with that. Like watching someone try to be Jesus because it very much matters to me who the actors are yeah. because I don't want, you know, someone to be a hypocrite acting as certain people. 
you know, not that we're claiming to be better or that we are more important, but like even the God that plays Jesus himself, he's not even a born again believer. He doesn't even probably have the Holy Spirit because he, he associates as a Catholic, which they don't really believe in the Holy Spirit. So how can someone that doesn't have the Holy Spirit most likely walk out as Jesus? It just not, it doesn't add up to me. And that's something that really did bother my spirit is looking into certain actors that are in the show that aren't walking with the Lord. That's pretty much it for our review. It was just that one scene that really popped out at us. There's a lot of other things in the episode, but that's just the biggest thing that we took from it. And so we want to leave it there. Comment down below your thoughts if you saw the scene in theaters. So make sure you leave a like on this video. We appreciate you all watching and supporting us. Make sure you comment down below and we will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Also, something that I forgot to mention is at the end of the movie, we actually got to pray for two people because the night before I had this vision where I was standing in front of the screen and I was just saying, hey, everybody, if you need prayer for anything, you know, come up. And so I had to face that fear because I was nervous and my legs were literally visibly shaking. It was probably the Lord that didn't make it obvious to those people, but I just had to fight my flesh and... It was cool to do that because we didn't just go there to watch The Chosen, but we got to minister a little bit and plant a seed. Because in the episode, he's talking about the kingdom of God, how it's coming. And what's cool is we got to show a little glimpse of that today at the end of the movie. People got to experience that little glimpse of the kingdom of God, and they might have not even known it in the moment. We're not just called to watch things, read things, pray about things, but we're called to be obedient, active disciples who bear fruit.